Hello, how are you doing today? I hope you're gearing up for the festive season. I've just been doing some festive baking. Uh, this morning I made these nutty crispy treats with silver smarties on top. And it's, it's not baking so much, it's more just melting and combining things. I will be doing some holiday baking later of making uh, some Christmas biscuits. Uh, but I'm anyway, I'm not here to defend my status as a domestic goddess. I'm here to talk about books because just recently the garden Guardian published their books of the year. Yes, another books list. But I especially look forward to this list every year because I think they do a good job of combining uh, some recommendations of the most lauded titles of the year as well as some lesser known and less discussed books. So they do different categories of uh, different genres um, for their, their best books of the year. But I'm just going to talk about the, the fiction uh, category. Uh, uh, in which they recommend 33 different books. Uh, so some of these books I have read and loved. Uh, others I've been wanting to read. Uh, a few of them I'd not really heard of before. And there are some books I read which I really didn't enjoy and really disagree with um, these, these choices. So I'm going to go through each title and discuss each of them and give any uh, summaries or thoughts or reactions I have to all of them. Starting off with with a great big whopper, um, one of the, the biggest publications at uh, the beginning of this year, which was To Paradise by Hanya Yanagihara, this massive epic novel, which is really three different novels in one, but actually each of these different novels, even though they center around the same residence in New York City at very different time periods and very different circumstances, I enjoyed each of these sections so much I was riveted reading this entire book um, throughout its different styles and its many different characters. I, I found it so enjoyable and engaging and, and so I'm glad this has been highlighted as one of the best books of the year because even though it's like really big and unwieldy in a lot of ways. Um, it is so impressive uh, to be able to write in such a compelling way that it'll grip you for so many pages, and that's what it did for me. Next is a much more recent book. It only just came out a, a few weeks ago, but another one of the biggest publications of this year, The Passenger by Cormac McCarthy, his return to publishing and fiction. And I know this story is only initially about a jet, which is crashed into the ocean and a salvage operation to try to understand what happened. Uh, I think the story expands into uh, a much bigger story which travels across the American um, South. Uh, but uh, yeah, that is just what the, the story is initially described as. Uh, but then uh, also just coming out is uh, his next novel, the companion book to The Passenger, um, which is Stella Maris, which which is, I think, only uh, initially, again, about a young woman in a psychiatric facility trying to understand her existence. And interestingly, Stella Maris, uh, I think, or at least the, the beginning of the book, takes place uh, eight years before um, the events of the, the Passenger. So I think it's kind of tunneling back through time. It'll be really interesting to see how these books work in relation to each other. I've not read them yet, and, and I know I, I've sort of poked fun at the uh, bro lit guys, you know, that rush to read this and are so excited to talk about it. Just to make it clear, I think they are absolutely adorable. And I am also really excited to, to read these books. So I'm sure I'll join their ranks once I finally get around to reading them. Lessons by Ian McEwan, a novel which follows the life of a man throughout his many years from his adolescence in post-World War II, going to a boarding school where a very dramatic event occurs, which which follows him uh, throughout the, the decades and through these big societal uh, events from uh, the Chernobyl disaster to the fall of the Berlin Wall up into the recent COVID-19 pandemic and how his personal growth uh, runs alongside these larger events in, in the world. I've not read this book yet. I've, I've read uh, a lot of Ian McEwan before when I was younger and I've been wanting to read uh, more of his work and his most recent work because I kind of went off from for a while, but I've heard really great things about this novel. Bourneville by Jonathan 
Co., a novel which is set in a suburb of Birmingham uh, where there's a big famous chocolate factory that employs a lot of uh, the local people uh, that in inhabit this suburb and it follows uh, the life and uh, changes to a family over a long period of time. Uh, so I think kind of like McEwen's novel, uh, this also looks at big societal changes alongside you know more personal events and it's another book I've, I've still not read yet uh, but I've read John Finko's fiction before and really enjoyed it. Companion Piece by Ali Smith, a novel which uh, yes is a companion to her seasonal quartet. It's not really part of that group but is like in the the same family in that it follows uh, someone uh, during recent events and um, through uh, the pandemic or the post-pandemic uh, when people are still unsure about uh, interacting with each other. It follows the, the life of a woman who's an artist and whose father is ill, uh, not with COVID but uh, with something else and uh, how her existence is intruded upon uh, by this acquaintance um, she knew at school and this acquaintance's family uh, but also a ghost from the, the distant past and they all sort of take up room in her house. Um, it is so fascinating and wonderful um, how she follows this story, yes with a lot of Ali Smith's characteristic wordplay and I just loved this story and the meaning of it and what she says about our relationship with nature and to each other and how we negotiate that. The Candy House by Jennifer Egan a uh, novel which is about a tech entrepreneur who happens upon this technology where uh, memory can be downloaded and stored and uh, so he tries to implement this and it shows um, how this affects the lives of a number of different characters um, through different sections. Um, it's said that this is a companion novel uh, to her previous book, A Visit from the Goon Squad, and I've still not read that earlier book so I want to read that first before getting to The Candy House, but so many people have been praising this book. I'm, I'm really eager to, to read it. Just the other day I, I saw uh, A Visit from the Goon Squad in a used bookstore and I should have got a copy. I think I'm going to go back and pick up that so I can read it over the winter period before getting to this new book. The Trees by Percival Everett. I, I know this came out a while ago in the US but it was only just published here in the UK this year and it's been much talked about because it was uh, shortlisted for the Booker Prize and this is such a wonderful and fascinating novel that takes place in a small town in Mississippi or at least that's where it begins where a very strange murder and crime has occurred and two uh, detectives which come to investigate this crime but how this expands to a much larger story about the history of lynching in uh, the United States and the the story is so mischievous and funny as well as insightful and meaningful and making a really big statement in itself. I, I think it's great. Glory by Noviolet Bulawayu, a novel which presents a fictionalized version of Zimbabwe and the coup which overthrew Mugabe but presents this through characters who are animals so it's very playful and funny but also very serious in its message about the workings of politics and of how there are different factions within in a country with competing uh, goals and uh, vested interests and how those uneasily brush up against each other when trying to form a nation and a government. I found it so effective um, also in the way that it becomes a much more personal story with the introduction of a, a character who had left the country but has returned to it. Uh, so I found it very meaningful and moving. I, I know there's been lots of debate about about this book. Some people really didn't like it but for me I found it really effective. After Sappho by Selby Wynne Schwartz, a very inventive hybrid kind of book which is both a novel and non-fiction looking at the lives of a number of different European women around the turn
turn of the 20th century and how they invented new lives for themselves and their feminist ideas. Uh, it's a very interesting book, but there are a lot of different figures um, that it's slightly difficult to keep track of them, uh, but it's so interesting what she's doing in this book. Trespasses by Louise Kennedy, a novel which is set in the mid 80s in and around Belfast about a woman who's a teacher but also sometimes works in her family's pub and uh, how the, the troubles are affecting her life as well as the, the students that she teaches uh, but also an affair she engages upon uh, as a Catholic woman um, with a Protestant married man and the complications and dangers of that. I just finished reading this novel recently. It is so moving and I was completely gripped and surprised by the end so I think it's an excellent novel. The Seven Moons of Molly Almeida by Shehan Karuna Talaka. Uh, I love this book so much. Uh, the story of a photojournalist uh, who's a freelancer but he, he photographs a lot of war scenes and it follows him immediately after he's died as he tries to discover who his killer is and reconnect uh, with some important people to him um, he knew during his lifetime but also now navigate this weird afterlife space um, where there are lots of ghosts, um, some of them who have died in war, um, some who he had photographed, others who are very vengeful and have their own scheme of, of what to do, and following his journey over a set specific period of, of time as um, he tries to uncover these things and photos he took um, which he thinks are going to shake the government to its core. It is so dramatic and strange and wondrous and I, I just love this book. The Marriage Portrait by Maggie O'Farrell, a historical novel uh, set in the 1500s in Italy about a daughter of the Medici family who marries a wealthy and powerful man only to discover um, he has very sinister uh, plans for her. Uh, so yes, I'm going to show off this beautiful Waterstone special edition I, I have again because it is just so beautiful beautiful and I'm looking forward to uh, hunkering down and reading this novel over the winter months. Shrines of Gaiety by Kate Atkinson, a novel set in 1920s London in CD Soho and a woman who is known as the queen of the nightlife there and how she has schemes and plans for her children which her children don't necessarily agree with and uh, this is another very shiny beautiful uh, copy of this book um, with beautiful blue and pages. It's the independent bookshop um, special edition of this book. The Exhibitionist by Charlotte Mendelssohn, a novel about a once very famous artist who stages a new show to try to revitalize his career and it follows his various family members uh, including his wife who is also a very talented artist and his children who have uh, various difficulties um, because he is a very domineering horrible patient patriarchal figure um, who treats them all really horribly and I didn't like this novel at all. I I found it just, it wasn't just that the, the characters are so unlikable but the way she writes about them in this semi comic tone or like it seemed to be in this this comic tone that um, just didn't really work for me. It kind of jarred with uh, my my understanding of it and I just really didn't like the, the style of the book and it, it didn't work for me and I know a lot of people um, found it quite difficult to, to read this book but obviously it has some fans because it's on this list. I'm Sorry You Feel That Way by Rebecca Waite, a novel about a dysfunctional family and issues to do with mental health um, following the lives of two sisters. This is one of those books that I've not really heard all that much about but I think it sounds really promising. Very Cold People by Sarah Mangasso, a debut novel uh, which 
which is kind of a coming of age tale about uh, a woman who grows up in a seemingly idyllic New England town, uh, but how she gradually discovers there's more sinister things going on beneath the, the surface. I'm really glad this list has reminded me about this book, um, which I got an advanced copy of earlier this year, but I've still not read yet. A Hunger by Ross Raisin, a novel which is about a woman who's a very talented sous chef, uh, but she is in a marriage to a man um, who is experiencing dementia and rapid memory loss, um, so it's trying to negotiate her professional career alongside um, her domestic obligations. Uh, so it's about that, that tension between ambition and uh, devotion to, to one's partner. I think this sounds so interesting and good. I mean, I love novels that involve cooking and food and uh, so, and this uh, author I've been meaning to read for a very long time, um, she says in this article that he's one of you know the, the great um, English authors that hasn't been celebrated as much as he should be. The Furrows by Namwali Serpel, a novel about a woman who uh, as a girl um, she lost her brother and his body was never recovered and uh, their mother isn't able to get over this, um, so forms this organization to, to search for lost children and so following her life and this is a novel which has appeared on so many different lists that I think I really need to read it. Yan Mungo by Douglas Stewart, a novel which uh, like the, the novel Trespasses is about love and an affair across the um, sectarian divide. Uh, it takes place in Scotland in a low income area uh, during the 1990s and follows the story of Mungo who's a Protestant and how he falls for a Catholic um, teenage boy um, named James and the uh, tension and difficulty of their relationship uh, through religious conflict but also um, being gay in a time and place where it was really frowned upon and very dangerous to, to be out. I loved this book. I, I think it is such a powerful and moving story. Amy and Len by Sadie Jones, a novel about two children growing up in this um, seemingly idyllic environment out in the countryside, um, how their parents and the other adults in this small community have tried to um, create this rural lifestyle for themselves in this, this country setting, um, so following their coming of age tale. In Olive Grove, In Ends by Moses McKenzie. Uh, this is a novel I've not come across before, but sounds really interesting about a young black man from Bristol um, who wants to escape the confines of his upbringing, uh, the racial prejudice that exists there, but uh, but also the um, religious constrictions of his upbringing um, to form his own life for himself. The Whale Tattoo by John Ransom, a novel about a, a young gay man um, who returns to the seaside community of his youth, which he left under very dramatic circumstances uh, some time ago, and uh, his reconciliation with his father, uh, but also his encounters with a number of people in this community. Uh, I read this novel with so many expectations and hope because um, it was personally recommended to me by a bookseller. I was so excited to read it. I read it as part of my, my book club and I just really didn't get on with this story as a whole. I thought there were interesting elements to it um, to do with his uh, interactions he had with a, a number of people, but um, some of the, the style of it I, I found a bit uh, jarring and didn't really work for me. Also, a warning in the synopsis of this book. There's a spoiler uh, that uh Kind of, that prevented me from enjoying the, the book and the story as much. So I was really surprised it was in there. Um, so yeah, I, I found that um, really difficult. I'm a Fan by Sheena Patel, a novel which unpicks a seemingly uh, unfaithful and unfair relationship, but also looks at the difficulty of relationships in a time of social media. Uh, this was recently declared uh, Foyle's Bookshop's uh, Book of the, the Year and it's one I've been really meaning to get to. When I Sing Mountains Dance by Irene Sola. This is a novel set in and around 
villages in the Pyrenees, uh, not just in the, the villages, but also the natural world around that, uh, looking at these uh, different communities and, and lives in this area. Uh, I started reading this novel, but just uh, really didn't get on with it. It might have just been the, the time that I picked it up. Uh, I've heard really great things about it otherwise, but, uh, but yeah, um, I, I might try reading it again at some point. Vladimir by Julia May Jonas, a much talked about novel about a woman and her husband who both teach at the same small liberal arts college. Um, he is accused of inappropriate relations with former students, but she also develops very passionate feelings for a visiting uh, talented young novelist. Send Nudes by Saba Sams. This is a collection of 10 short stories about the lives of young women and the, the dangers of growing up too fast in an age of social media. Reward System by Jem Calder. This is another collection of short stories um, that looks at love and loneliness as mediated uh, through Zoom calls and uh, throughout lockdown. Uh, I heard the author read from this book um, earlier this, this year. I thought it sounded so interesting and innovative and I've been meaning to, to read these stories. We Move by Gurnaik Johal, a collection of short stories mostly set in West London and about a group of characters uh, but looking at larger issues to do with the movement of multiple generations of immigrants. Uh, this is another uh, collection I've heard really great things about. Liberation Day by George Saunders, a collection of short stories that look at brutal realities and bizarre fantasies. Uh, George Saunders' style of writing is so innovative and, and unique, and I loved his novel Lincoln and the Bardo so much. I've been wanting to read more of his fiction, and yeah, I've not been so good at reading short stories recently, but I want to get to these different collections. Yoga by Emmanuel Carré a story about a man who goes on a, a journey to uh, improve himself uh, but also as a celebrated writer um, he wants to write his next great work and things don't go according to, to plan. I think this sounds so interesting. The Book of Goose by Yi Yun Li, a novel about uh, two girls who grew up together in France uh, amidst a war, how one of them uh, went to live in America while the other stayed in France. So looking at their different lives and friendship and intimacy and obsession. Uh, I've read a uh, number of books by Yi Yun Li before. I think she's such an interesting and powerful writer, so I'm keen to, to finally get to this. And finally, there's a very recent uh, but very short uh, new novel, or I guess you'd have to call it a novella, uh, Marigold and Rose by Louise Gluck, uh, the Nobel Prize winning poet. And this is her first uh, uh, work of fiction, I think, that she's published. Uh, it's the story of twin girls and uh, following the first year in their lives um, in this quite like poetic and strange sounding way, but it sounds so intriguing. I'm really interested to read this because I've read some of Gleck's poems before. I, I think they're very moving and um, so I'm really interested to see how she's tackling fiction and her publishers must love that she's finally bringing uh, a novel out and, you know, that because uh, works of fiction just sell much more than poetry, don't they? I mean, that's just the, the reality of it. Now, those are all the books of fiction which are talked about in the, the printed version of this list, but I've seen that online there, there are actually more books um, amidst this list, um, which I assume just weren't able to, to be in the physical edition because of space-wise, or, or maybe they were added later, I, I don't know. But I also want to add um, really quickly, because there's also a section about the best graphic novels from the, the past year. So I wanted to highlight one of their choices, um, which is Acting Class by Nick Dernasso, um, which is a book I read and enjoyed so much. It's really interesting how he looks at the lives of a number of different characters who all are kind of socially awkward and, and feel lonely in different ways, but they get together with 
for this class, which is nominally about learning about acting, but it's actually much more than that and slightly sinister. Um, so it's really intriguing how that whole story plays out. So those are all the books I'm going to talk about on, on these lists. I'd, I'd love to know if you've read any of these, um, if you agree with these choices, or if you're interested in reading any of the, them now, uh, please let me know about that in the, the comments below. But yeah, I hope you're doing well and reading good things, and I'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.